Welcome back, compadres. We're going to continue on the petroleum economics theme. Today we're going to look at the three remaining economic yardsticks used in petroleum engineering. Specifically, we're going to look at average value profit, payout, and profit to investment ratio. And we're going to calculate this using actual production data from a gas well. And we're going to do this all in Excel. So guys, let's get to it. So here's our five economic yardsticks, internal rate of return, net present value, payback period, profit to investment ratio, and average value profit. Today we're going to discuss average value profit, profit to investment ratio, and payback period. The first one we're going to talk about is average value profit. It is simply the sum of all discounted cash flows. All you need to know is that you just use simple addition and subtraction. ABP equals all cash in minus all cash out. You know, it's real simple. Uh, Self-explanatory, for sure. So on a present value profile plot, your average value profit would be the y-intercept. So that corresponds to an internal interest rate or a rate of return of 0%. Whereas our IRR was the x-intercept. The next economic yardstick is profit to investment ratio, and essentially it's used to rank projects. Now there's an undiscounted profit to investment ratio and a discounted profit to investment ratio. In one case, the undiscounted case, you calculate your average value profit and you divide it by the initial investment. In the other case, you use your net present value and you divide it by the initial investment, and that ratio will tell you something about the project. The best way to understand profit to investment ratio that I found is to work through a simple example. So let's do that. So say you have a revenue stream. You invested in some opportunity, $450, and you got a rev revenue from it over the next five years. You also had a small operating expense to maintain your investment. So the first thing you'd want to do to calculate profit to investment ratio, the discounted version, is to just sum up your cash flows um, by row. You do that, you get a net cash flow stream, and then you add that list of cash flows for every year, and you get your average value profit. So to calculate profit to investment ratio, you just simply take your AVP over your initial investment. And it's got to be the absolute value of your initial investment because we don't want to deal with, with negatives here. So 550 over 450, you get a value of 1.22 in this case, and that's a good value. Anything, any value greater than one is good for a undiscounted profit to investment ratio. So to calculate your discounted profit to investment ratio, you'd simply just calculate a discount factor. In this case, we just used our simple formula that we've applied previously assuming an interest rate of 12%, we get a list of discount factors, and then we multiply that by each net cash flow stream, and we get a present value for each uh, cash flow. And so this is basically discounted everything back to year zero. You add those together, and that's your net present value. So we get a net present value by summing the column, and now we can calculate our discounted profit to investment ratio which is simply MPV over the initial investment and you get a value of 0 0.48 in this case when you're using MPV as long as it's greater than zero that's a good thing if it's negative it's a bad thing the next economic yardstick an important one is payout your manager may want to know the length of time it takes to recover initial investment and you may want to know that also <laughs> if it's going to take years that may not be something that's uh, that's feasible for your company who knows but there's an undiscounted and a discounted version of payout and the best way to understand this is to work through a simple example and calculate each so we're using that same revenue stream we did to discuss profit to investment ratio we have our revenue for each year, our expenses for each year, our net cash flow for each year, and our present value column. So what you're looking for in this case is you want to perform a cumulative sum of your net cash flow if you're going to calculate the undiscounted version of payout. 
So to calculate your cumulative sum, you simply just take your previous value and you add the new value. So negative 450 plus 140, you get negative 310. Then you take negative 310 plus 90, you get negative 220. And that's just your cumulative sum of your net cash flow. So if we look at this column, you can see that we recover our initial investment between year four and year three. So we recover our initial investment when we cross zero. So to determine our payout, we simply just linear interpolate. One way to do it is to take your previous year value three, take your negative value, the absolute value of your negative value is gonna be 80 in this case, and divide it by the year four net cash flow. And you basically just calculated your payout, that it would pay out in 3.42 years from your initial investment. So the discounted version of it payout is not really that much more difficult to calculate. Uh, we just, instead of using our net cash flow stream, we use our present value stream. And so we do the exact same thing. Do a cumulative sum of those values the exact same way we did for the undiscounted version. And then we find where we recover our initial investment, which occurs between year four and year five and we do the exact same calculation. We take our previous year, which is four, and then we take our, our negative sum, take the absolute value of our negative sum, which is 32.85, divide it by uh, the next year's present value, and bang, our payout is uh, predicted to occur in 4.13 years. You can see here we got two different values of payout. When we took into account the time value of money, we actually recovered our initial investment uh, later than we did when we used our undiscounted version. So I would really trust our discounted version in this case. This gives you a better estimate of when you'll actually recover your investment, taking into account the time value of money. But that's it. Uh, we covered just some fundamental examples. Now we're going to go apply it to gas production decline data. I think it'll be exciting to see how that works out and actually how to do that. We're going to use Excel VBA to determine some of these values because it's a little bit easier and we don't have to just create a columns and columns of data. We can just do it with the, a mouse click. So let's go ahead and jump into that so I can show you how that's done. So this is the same example we've been using the whole time. So we're just going to add on to our template. We're going to calculate AVP, profit to investment ratio payout, and we're going to calculate the undiscounted and discounted versions of those two. And we're going to step through the Excel VBA code for payout. So we're just going to get into it. If you don't remember what we did, go back to the previous video. I explained how we got some of these numbers, and there's also VBA code for that. So to calculate AVP, we're simply going to take our EUR times our net price minus our operating cost. Keep in mind, this is constant operating cost times the number of days that you're producing this well. In this case, it's the life of the well in days minus the drilling and completion cost. So the well is going to make almost $2 million over its life. That's pretty incredible. Next, we're going to calculate profit to investment ratio. So if you remember, the undiscounted form of profit to investment ratio is simply our APV divided by our initial investment. In this case, it's going to be AVP divided by our drilling and completion cost. And that value is 1.877, which is greater than 1, so that's a good thing. But if we want to compare this to other projects or rank it with other projects, we need to calculate a discounted profit to investment ratio. So that's simply going to be our net present value. In this case, this is going to be a net present value calculated at an interest rate of 12%. You can see this value corresponds to this value at 12% divided by our drilling and completion cost. And that value is 0 0.49, which is great. As long as it's above zero, it's profitable. Next, we want to calculate our payout. And so to do this, it takes, <laughs> you got to write some code, uh, which I'll step into 
but the VBA function for this is going to be payout. And it's going to take the following arguments. Our initial investment, our operating cost, in this case it's a constant operating cost, our initial rate, which I'm going to use from our best fit, our initial decline, our B boundary dominated, and our net gas price. And this is the undiscounted form. So this number tells you that this well will pay out in 1,217 days. That's pretty cool, but your boss probably wants to know what that value is in years. So divided by 365, and you get this value. So this well will pay out in 3.33 years if you don't discount anything. But we know the time value of money is relevant today, so we have to take that into account. And it's going to take similar arguments. Our initial investment, our operating cost, our initial rate, our initial decline. And you have to keep the units correct, guys. You know, this is uh, very important. So this is our daily initial decline. This is our daily rate or B boundary dominated. In this case, I wrote the BVA function to take in annual interest rate. We're going to assume it's 12%. And then our gas price, our net gas price. And we end up getting a payout occurring at 1,667 days, which turns out to be, let's just drag this over. four and a half years almost. So you can see there's some discrepancy between these two numbers. I would use the discounted version because time value of money is relevant today. And so I would tell my boss that this well will pay out in four and a half years. A little over four and a half years. Um, so that's really simple. Um, to get these numbers we're going to go ahead and step into the VBA code. But that was easy, guys. That's real simple. If you understand this, you can extend it to other things. Um, so let's go look at the code so that you can understand what I did and you could possibly modify it to fit your situation or your problem, the problem you're trying to solve. Let's step into the source code to figure out how I determined the undiscounted and discounted payouts. So the first thing we're going to talk about is the source code for undiscounted payout. So it takes arguments, initial investment, operating costs, initial rate, initial decline rate, B boundary dominated, and the net gas price. I initialized some parameters such as the operating cost and then the net cash flow. I initialize it to our initial, the negative of our initial investment. You'll see why. And then a time value. Set it equal to zero because eventually we want to linear interpolate and find out at what time we recovered our initial investment. So this is where the magic happens. You while, you step into this while loop and you basically iterate until your net cash flow becomes positive. In this case, I made a variable here that we're going to store uh, and keep and use it to help us linearly interpolate between two values. But this is the gas rate. It's calculated from ARPS. We've seen that before. And then I determine a revenue and then I calculate the cumulative sum. And then I step forward in time. Uh, for the next iteration and I continue to do this until my net cash flow becomes positive and so these two points right here NCF2 and NCF1 they will straddle zero and then I use those two values and call another function to linear interpolate between the two to get us a time value and you can remember that this net cash flow one is going to occur the day before and this net cash flow two is going to occur during the next time based on how this while loop works and you can step through it and figure it out because it's not too difficult to, to understand um, you need to learn how to read code anyways if you don't know it um, and that's it that's real simple guys so that's how I calculated payout the only difference is when I calculate 
discounted payout is the following. Same arguments except I take a annual discount rate into effect. And that annual discount rate is going to be the discount rate over a year. I initialize some parameters, the operating cost, the net cash flow like I did previously, the time. But here is where I divided the discount rate by 356 to keep it consistent with the units that I'm working with. I'm working with days here, so I'm going to use a discount rate in days. Simple enough. I use the same while loop. The only difference is I'm discounting my revenue stream and I'm discounting my operating costs using a discount factor. This is the same stuff, same stuff that comes from our compound interest formulas. If you don't remember that, go review my first video. I just calculated a discount factor. So I'm discounting revenue or operating costs. We didn't have to discount our initial investment because that occurred at time zero. And then this while this loop continues to go until I cross zero because I'm initially going to be negative because my initial investment's negative and it's going to while until I'm above zero and then I'm going to store two points that straddle zero and then I'm going to linear interpolate and this is where I call the linear interpolate function and I linear interpolate between two points and I get the time value and that ends it and this is my linear interpolation function you've done this in thermodynamics I'm sure it's basically just you know it's stuff you should be able to do in your calculator that's the function there's the code that's how I done it the way I could think of it how to do it I'm sure there's a better way if you have a better way feel free to ping me man I'm always looking to get better but I hope you understood what I did and if you can work through this code understand it you're a rock star but that's how it was done guys real simple I uh, hope you enjoyed the video the code will be posted on my website if you want to use it for yourself and uh, I'll see you next time